Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. And I just wanted to come and run my mouth for a quick second. We're going to go ahead and talk about Love and Marriage DC. All right, so let me ask y'all a question. On a scale from 1 to 10, what, what would you rate um, the show? What would you rate Love and Marriage DC on a scale from 1 to 10? I would give this first season probably a six. Wasn't a horrible season. I almost clocked out. I did. So I guess it wasn't too great. <laughs> girl, I guess I just lied to y'all face, girl. I'm telling y'all. Girl, I almost stopped watching. So I guess it, it wasn't too great. Maybe I should give it a five. <laughs> okay. Maybe I should give it a five. Um, but, you know, we stuck, We I stuck, you know, I finished the season, we have the reunion, and, we, you know, we'll actually be done after the reunion. Um, but I'll give it maybe like a five and a half, six, right? Um, do you think that they should bring back all the cast members? I think they should bring back all the cast members. I'm not exactly sure why Winter was not in the opening credits. Maybe because she really wasn't a couple, I guess. That's the only thing I can think of. Because quiet as it's kept, if it wasn't for Winter and Ashley, girl, it wouldn't have been no season. And that's just true, T. <clears throat> I think that they were probably banking on Monique and um, the, the, you know, the response that she received over on that other show, right? I think they were baking on that in the fact that y'all were out here in these streets calling Monique iconic and the queen and she's this and she's that. Girl, what would you give Monique and her performance on Love and Marriage DC? I've been told y'all, I think that Monique might be a nice lady in real life. I think that she might be a great mother, you know. Um, I think that she's probably a great ally to the LGBTQ community, right? But I also will say in the same breath that Monique is not that girl when it comes to reality TV. Girl, I've been trying to tell y'all that for the longest, and now y'all see what I'm talking about. Girl. <laughs> it's sad that now the only thing that I saw on Twitter were people basically talking about how they basically finally see that girl, Monique, girl, quiet as it's kept, girl, what's the problem? We're going to leave it alone because we're about to get into the episode, okay? But I'm going to bring up that other show in a little bit. Best believe it, okay? Um, so basically they do IV therapy. Ashley wants to play a game. Of course, on any show, no matter what, whenever someone wants, whenever someone wants to play a game and questions are being asked, girl, I can tell you, honey, it's gonna turn into a mess. Girl, anytime they want, anytime the girls say, girl, let's ask some questions, honey, it's about to turn into a straight up sh circus. Okay. Um, one of the questions: Who will be eighty years old? Still getting it in. Of course, the smallest person in the room. He stands up. Me, DJ Quick. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I feel like DJ Quick is an attention whore. <laughs> I do. I do. I think that he loves the attention. I think that... Um, I don't know if it has anything to do with him being... You know, the height, the size that he is, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. That, at the end of this show, when he pulled out that ring, I was disgusted. I was. I was disgusted. Um, it, it, it made me mad because I felt like that was a moment that should have been about Ashley and Ashley only. It was not about the kids. It was not about DJ Quick and... This moment that, again, we here we're here to celebrate Ashley. He turned around and made it about him. How that rock look? How that rock look? Sit your ass down. This wasn't even supposed to be about no ring. This was supposed to be about Ashley and her book. You would think that after 
Ashley told him to his face in front of everybody that she wouldn't even marry him again because the last 20 years she got the short end of the stick. Right? Everything has been about him. She had to pretty much be his mama, raise him, teach him. You would think that after she said that, that a light bulb would have went off in his head and said, maybe I should sit this one out today and let her have her moment. But no, he want to get on the stage and hoop and holler and, and show off the ring that he got for Ashley. How that rock look, how that rock look. Sit your little ass down. I didn't like it at all. I didn't like it. 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 I said, he going to have a fit if this show continues to go on. Because the truth of the matter is, Ashley is probably going to be like, I won't call her no breakout star <laughs> right now. But if the show continues, Ashley's probably going to be like, as much as they probably want Monique to be the face of the show, Ashley's probably going to be the face of the show. And he ain't going to like that. I can guarantee you. Because he's used to Ashley probably more than likely being at his beck and call. Being available anytime he needs her to be available. And if this show continues to go on for four and five seasons and Ashley remains on the show, Ashley's going to be that girl on the show. Ashley in winter. Unless they leave, of course. And he's not going to be able to handle it. He couldn't even handle them. He couldn't even handle this one situation, this one time where it was supposed to be about, be about her. So just imagine. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I just didn't. Ashley says that DJ Quick, he always tries to seem like he's a big man on campus. That's what I get from him. I get that he's an attention whore. I get that he always tries to make things about him. He can't never sit down and be still. He can't never hush. <laughs> Quick starts to tell a story, I guess, about how I guess Ashley was his girlfriend. Ashley, <laughs> listen, I'm sorry. I believe everything Ashley was saying. <laughs> I just do. <laughs> I think DJ Quick has a warped sense of reality. He starts to tell a story, I guess, about how basically he was cheating on Ashley. Ashley cheated on him. Can I say something, y'all? Because I'm about to make some of y'all mad. If I haven't already. <clears throat> Ashley says she, she cheated on DJ Quick. Now, mind you, we're talking about like 20 years ago. 15, 20 years ago. That's how long ago it was. I think, I think they said 20. So Ashley cheated on DJ Quick. But it was, you know, I guess she got caught texting someone. Girl, did we have texting 20 years ago? Girl, that's like a long time ago. Did we? I think we probably did. <laughs> so anyways, she got caught texting someone. Um, and so, you know, they were like, you know, he, she was emotionally cheating on DJ quick. While yes, I do believe that emotional cheating is cheating pretty much quiet as it's kept. Anytime you're doing something in secrecy, right? And your partner, you know, DJ quick don't like for Ashley be, to be called his partner. Um, anytime your partner doesn't know about it, it's probably cheating. If it involves the opposite sex or the sex that you're attracted to, right? And you don't want your, um, you know, wife, girlfriend, husband, boyfriend to find out if you're doing it in secret, girl, you're probably cheating. <laughs> With that being said, I think that these men... Don't really agree that emotional cheating is cheating. I think they use that as a way to make a woman, if she is caught emotionally cheating, as being on the same level as him going out there and fucking a bitch. Because I can guarantee you, 
While they sit here and say, oh, emotional cheating is sometimes worse than the physical, let Ashley or any other woman go out there and hop on the dick and do a full split and see how quick they change their motherfucking tune. I guarantee you then, emotional cheating will not be on the same level as hopping on a dick and doing a full split. I think they say that shit. I think they say that shit because they know that people call women emotional creatures even though men are more emotional than than women right and they use that to try to make it an even playing field when again emotional cheating is cheating but i'm sorry bitch you letting somebody fuck you or you fucking somebody bitch i think that's a little worse i don't give a damn what nobody got to say i'm done with it um Girl, Ashley says, if Quick ever played me, I got my lick back. Bitch, I say yes. I say yes, ma'am. You see how Quick in the confessional, now, now he in the confessional talking about what does lick back mean? Girl, what the fuck you think it mean? Because the same way you was out of here thinking you was a big man on campus, Fucking me and fucking her and cheating on me and doing this. Yeah, I got my lick back. So whatever you want to think that lick back mean, that's what it mean. So, of course, Ashley in the confessional says, oh, I just said that to make you mad. It ain't that big of a, you know, it's not that big of a deal. I hope Ashley was out here getting fucked. Because you was out here doing, you was out here fucking bitches. So why she can't fuck back? It ain't fun when a rabbit got the gun. <laughs> Anyways, so they have a party. They have like a costume party, girl. Um, and one of the questions was, would you marry your partner? I think it was like, would you marry your partner again based off of what you know today? <laughs> right. You see, Chris starts to talk. And... He's basically like, you know, Monique is controlling. Monique is this, but she's my soulmate. I love her, blah, blah, blah. You know, I would marry her again. Um, and then he brings up another woman from a previous relationship. Monique gets irritated. She, you know, you can tell she's visibly upset. Um... <laughs> Can I say something? I honestly, honestly, honestly don't think that Chris meant anything about it. While yes, let me say this, while yes, when Monique said that you don't have to, because later in the episode she said this, you don't have to basically compare me to the worst, right? Or compare me to someone who didn't make the cut. Like you don't have to compare me to an ex to show to 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 demonstrate or to show me how much you love me. Like it made sense. I know people were giving Monique a hard time online, but when, once Monique said that, I actually understood well, why why she was upset. However, I honestly don't think that Chris meant anything by it. Like I think that, and this is the problem, right? And I know I'm getting ahead of myself. This is a problem with Monique. And this is what Mo Monique said. Monique, hold up. Monique said that in my marriage, I feel insignificant. I, like I'm always having to prove myself. And that's pretty much been my life. Always trying to prove that I'm valuable. I love the fact that Chris hugged her in the confessional when she started getting when she started crying because girl Jamie girl he he, he pretty much tapped Jamie on uh, a rain on a leg and pretty much told her to shut the fuck up. He didn't say it, but what you crying for, girl? Y'all don't even know how to like comfort your wives when they're crying. So thank God for Chris for knowing how to comfort his wife, right? Um, she said that I have to prove my value. Um, I have to prove my worthiness. And I'm going to go ahead and say it. This brought me back to the other show, Real Housewives of Potomac. I think that whatever, whatever Monique is going through or whatever Monique is feeling, it just, I kind, I kind of think it further proves the point that I have tried to make even 
in my reviews from that other show that Monique wants to fit in so bad, right? Like with Giselle and Robin and Ashley, she was willing to throw her friendship with Candace away in order to feel like she could fit in with the cool girls, right? The cool kids at the lunch table, right? She always feels like she has to prove something to the other people. So she's willing to, and she may not even know that she's doing it. That's the real gag. Or she might, right? Like this year with winter. She really pretty much threw winter under the bus. <laughs> it's literally the same thing that happened on the other show. I think that Monique needs to really go to therapy and see what the problem is. It clearly is something that probably stems from her childhood. I don't think there's anything Chris can do about it because that's how Monique feels, right? She feels that she's not worthy. She feels like she always has to prove herself. That's exactly what she was doing on Real Housewives of Potomac. Trying to prove herself to Giselle, trying to prove herself to Robin, to Ashley, so she could fit in. And girl, they didn't want, they didn't want no parts of her. <laughs> Now, what Monique said in response to Chris, I thought was absolutely probably one of the best responses. Monique basically says that she thinks that the paper comp uh, complicated their relationship and that she would still probably be with, not probably, she said she would still be with him, but she don't know, she doesn't know if she would marry him. I really do believe this. I think that when people get married, I think it do fuck up a lot of relationships. I do. Because I think that people at that point, instead of living by your own rules, right, and operating in your relationship how you see fit, I think that people start to try to live up to this expectation of what a wife is supposed to be, what a husband is supposed to be. And you're not going to meet those expectations. And so now when we were boyfriend and girlfriend, we were just having the time of our lives, right? Here we had kids. We had this. We did this. We did this. We just, we had fun. Now we done got this paper involved and now it's, oh my God, I have to be this wife. Oh my God, you have to be this husband. And now girl, a relationship is a hot ass mess. I do believe that marriages fuck up relationship. I'm not saying relationships fuck up relationships. I think that when people go get married, I think it fucks up people's relationship because they try to live up to this ex expectation that they just will never meet. But that's just me. I don't know shit. Okay. Um, Ashley. Ashley says no. I, look, I like Ashley. I do. Ashley, I like Arena because Arena bad. But I like Ashley. I feel like Ashley is honest. I don't think Ashley is a liar. She straight up told she straight up told that man no. Um, I felt like I, I felt like I took 20 years out of my life raising you, molding you, and I've always gotten the short end of the stick. The truth of the matter is Ashley and probably a lot of other women, like with DJ Quick. DJ Quick, what has DJ Quick given up? Ashley has had to drop out of school twice. She's had to battle depression all while raising a grown ass man, molding a grown ass man, taking care of the house, taking care of the kids. And DJ, um, I was going to say DJ Envy. DJ Quick has still been able to go out there, chase his dreams, make money, have kids, not raise the kids. Okay. Because Ashley already told us, girl, he don't help take care of, I mean, girl, based off what I've seen the first couple of episodes, girl, he always gone. So if he always gone, then girl, he ain't at the house. And if he ain't, he ain't the ha at the house and the kids at the house, then Ashley at the house raising the kids. The very first episode, he literally had a coffee mug that said, go ask your mother. So, girl, I'm just going by what I saw. <laughs> What has he given up? Ashley has given up everything in order to have this family. He has the family, the kids, the badass wife, right? Gorgeous wife, smart wife. Girl, he's still able to go out there and live out his dreams. And girl, what? I'm with Ashley. 
Um, of course, he says he would marry her. Of course you would. Girl, why would you not remarry Ashley? Um, Monique and Chris. So they have a conversation. Think about what you're going to say and how it, it could impact. Bringing up someone from your past is hella disrespectful and embarrassing. And this is another thing, too. While I do agree with Monique that, girl, like, you don't have to bring up somebody from your past in order to uplift me or to show me that you love me. But I also thought about this, too, girl. Because, you know, it was rumors going around that allegedly Monique used to be the side chick. I don't know if that's true. Again, those are rumors, girl. That is allegedly, okay? That Monique used to be the side chick. So I started thinking, girl, was this the girl who was in his life when Monique came around, girl, and started throwing her legs to the moon for this man who was already in a relationship? I guess we'll never know. Um, so Chris responds to her and was like, I've only cared about you and one other person outside of you. And it wasn't to this magnitude. See, you're doing it again. This is the problem, right? I really don't think that Chris has any ill intent when he's speaking to Monique or he's saying certain stuff. I honestly don't. I really, really don't. Would I want to marry Chris? Probably not, girl, you know. Um, I've told y'all I think Chris gives me very much old school, old school, old school, old school ways, right? I bring home the bacon, you take care of the kids. If that's what you want to do, if that's how you want to live your life, then girl, go ahead and sign up for it. Um... But I think that Monique is so concerned about what other people think because I honestly don't think that people really thought that deep into it when he mentioned, you know, the other girl that he was in love with. Maybe because I guess I, may, I guess I don't matter, but I didn't even think that deep into it. Like, and I'm not saying just because I didn't think that deep into it, that means nobody else did. But I don't really think. I think Monique is so worried about what people think that that drives her insane. And again, I think that was part of the problem on that other show, Real Housewives of Potomac. She's too. She's too concerned. Don't get it twisted. We all care about what people think. Regardless of what people say, we do. Right? But it also comes like to like, girl, you, it's going to drive you crazy. It's so disrespectful. You hurt my feelings. You don't know how it may, like, girl, I don't think it was like, unless it's more to the story, unless you're probably crying because you feel as though, why would you bring that up knowing that I met you and I was a side bitch? Because why are you this bothered that he said what he said when I really don't think that he had any ill intent behind him saying it? Monique got some problems, y'all. <laughs> um, oh, baby. Um, Arena and Jamie, their son, look, Jamie, honey, he told them the night before he had court. I'm just going to go ahead and say it, baby. That girl, I'm trying to figure out <laughs> is this a grown ass man or not? Because why is it that Jamie has to go upstairs and ask if he took a shower? Why Jamie asks this grown ass man, did you put on deodorant? Why is your mama in the other room ironing your clothes? That's probably part of the goddamn problem. The simple fact that you, a grown man, can't even iron his clothes. The simple fact that you got to ask a grown man if he washed his ass or not. The simple fact that you got to ask a grown ass man if he put on deodorant. Girl, that's an issue. Those are issues. I said, what the fuck? Girl. He got nine charges. Anyways, he got indicted on the fel felony charges. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he didn't go to jail because he in the confessionals, so I don't know, child. Um, Arena and Jamie was acting like they was fucking in the restroom at Ashley party. You know, Arena and Jamie ain't having no sex, child. Um, and that was pretty much it, girl. And then Quick pulled out that. I, I thought that was just tacky. I thought it was tacky. I didn't like it. I was, I was happy that Ashley finally had this moment. 
And she even said, this is a not, this is not about the kids. This is not about, this is not about, she said, this is not about being a wife. This is not being about a mother. This is about me. And then he literally turned around and made it about him. After she just told your ass, you're at the goddamn party. She wouldn't even remarry your ass no more. Anyways, I'm done. I'll talk to y'all girls later. I did not know this review was going to be 25 minutes long. All right, bye, y'all.